If this is what multiplication is, what would you think division looks like? What do you think division looks like? Division is like multiplication. Division is just the inverse of multiplication, right? So you should expect that many things would work in the same way. What would you guess? Yeah, Mitsu. You multiply and you, you do the opposite, divide and subtract. Very good. Okay, so if I'm doing the inverse of this over here, that's division, right? Then it makes sense that I would do the inverse of this. Multiplication will also become division. And the inverse of addition is subtraction, right? So I'm going to get something that looks like this. And here's the wonderful thing, and I'll just leave it to you if you are the curious type, right? How did we arrive at this? How did we get from that Oops. to this? And the answer was, we just multiplied the thing out, right? We expanded it, we got a whole bunch of cos and sine terms, and then we used our trig identities, our trig expansions, right? Well, you're going to have some more expansions coming up in here, and you can do it in exactly the same process, but it, it looks very similar, honestly, <coughs> with just a few pluses and minuses different, as you'd expect. So I'm going to leave that for your homework, if you like. Okay, Jen. All two is zero. What would happen? That's a great question. Okay, let's just um, let's think about that for a second. R two, if R two was zero. Like zero plus I or okay, now hold on a second. We don't need to think too much about this. Actually, we know exactly the number that is uh, where R two is zero. Right. Where the is R two is zero? The origin. It's the origin, right? It's that one number where once you know what the modulus is, you don't care what the argument is anymore because it's like, well, it doesn't matter where you're facing, you're at the origin, oh, right. okay? That's so, right. right, so that means if R2 is zero, then in fact, the number itself is zero, okay? Now, we know what multiplication by zero means. You're going to scale it. You're just going to come down to zero, okay? That works in exactly the same way. What happens when you divide? You can't define it meaningfully, right? Uh, for this reason, if you say, if you say six over two equals three, right? The reason you can say it is because you can say six equals three times two. That's why it makes sense. Okay. But if you go six over zero equals something, then no matter what you put over here, no matter how you define it, right? Then by definition, you should be able to say that 6 is 0 times that something. But there's no thing you can multiply by 0 such so you get 6 or 5 or any other non-zero number. Um, so this is why it's not the mathematicians are lazy. It's that you can't define it with anything. No matter what you put in here, you will break things. Okay? That's why divide. Okay, excellent. Any questions on that first? One more implication? Is there a question? Is there a question? Good luck. <laughs> Okay, one, one more implication, and then we'll work through some examples together, okay? I want you to think now again in all of this monarch form, right? And I want you to tell me what you can say about this guy. Hmm. Think carefully, think carefully. So, this is a conjugate, right? This is a conjugate. In Cartesian form, we know that if z equals x plus i, y, then what do you, how do we define the conjugate? Z plus z bar. Plus bar. The, yeah, that's right. This plus will turn into a minus, right? X minus i, y. Now, what is that going to mean in mod arg form? Well, let me give you the easy part, okay? If I'm defining it, this is just not z1, z2, it's just z. So we'll just go r and theta, okay? Have a look at this number, right? Or this pair of numbers, rather. What's going to happen to the modulus? How is it going to change from one number to the next? The answer is it's not going to change, is it? Okay. So for example, if I put onto here, let's put x plus i y there. Where is x minus i y? Well, the the real number is still the same. So horizontally, it's still the same. But I've I've reflected across the real axis, right? So here I am at x minus i y, right? So the modulus is still unchanged. It's just going to be r, right? Ah, uh, but my angle has changed, right? Clearly, my angle has changed. Um, in order to get this first number, I go up like that. There's theta. Okay. How do I get to the second number? How do I get to the conjugate? Minus. Yeah, you don't go up. You go down. Or I should say, rather than going anti-clockwise, I go clockwise. Right? And this is one of the reasons why it's like, oh. One of the many reasons. Why the principal argument is not naught to 2 pi. Right? It's not all to 2 pi. I mean, we could define it like that if we wanted to, 
But it makes so much more sense to say, well, if I have conjugates going around, you either go one direction or you go the opposite one. Right? So that makes it much easier. So what you've got here is going to be cos of negative theta. There's my, there's my real part. Okay? Now, it's worth noticing. Hold on a second. We just said that the real part doesn't change. Right? Like, look. The real part's still the same. So why have I changed my theta on that? Ah, because cos is an even function. Right? Cos is an even function. Cos of negative theta is cos theta. Right? Plus I sine of negative theta. Okay? And you can clearly see, by the way, look, uh, this is not the important part. In fact, it's almost going in reverse. Because cos of negative theta is just cos theta, is an even function. What about sine? Minus. Yeah, sine's an odd function, right? So this is minus i sine theta, and you're like, oh yeah, look, there it is. There's the conjugate, right? Instead of cos theta plus i sine theta, there's my negative, right? But here's the power of it. I can think of it exclusively in terms of how the argument has changed, rather than how the two bits have changed. Okay. 